this is a nail biter. Our average speed, I mean, is going from 30 to 40, occasionally to 45, back to 30, and we have approximately 30 kilometers to go, and it's exactly one hour until they close the gate. Whew, this is gonna be close. Gwyn, that's my wife, and I are on an expedition to find close animal encounters in Southern Africa. And right now we're in Botswana, heading for the Central Kalahari Game Reserve. We're trying to make the gate before nightfall. Uh, if the road doesn't deteriorate, we'll make it. We gave it a, we really gave it a good shot, but I think we would have got, I think we would have got there on time, but Doc, what's the point in that? Different. Look, look, that's elephant, Gwyn. There is an elephant, oh, wow. look. That is without question that's elephant. That's a very fresh elephant track. How was your night? I slept well last night. Nothing happened at 10 past 2. Ah, what happened at 10 past 2? An elephant shook the tent. You lie. You and I broke a fundamental rule of camping. Well, we even spoke about it last night. We, but we were so shattered. We said, have we parked in an elephant's track? And you, we said, parked. And you said to me, yes, we have. Let's go and look <laughs> at the dung. <laughs> Don't judge the efficacy of a game path by the age of its dung. If it's a game path, it's a game path. And don't camp, don't wait until you're absolutely shattered to yeah, camp. Yeah, yeah it, wasn't a, it was not a good move on our part. Oh we, well. We won't do that again. Gave me a big fright. Let me give you an idea of how stupid we were. This is the, obviously the elephant's path. It comes through here, it comes down through here, okay, and if the car wasn't there, we would see where it goes to, and it clearly goes, it's unmistakable, through these bushes here. So if I'm an elephant, which I was last night, I'd be walking and I would see this in front of me. And I would obviously say, what is going on with this brown Land Cruiser? Sniff around a bit. Get a slightly annoyed because I have to walk around it and then carry on my path. Idiots abroad, what can I say? That if an ele elephant approached us now, we, we wouldn't know it until he was right here. They make absolutely no sound at all. It's an unbelievable how a 10 ton animal makes no sound when it walks through the bush. That's a beautiful fresh tr print. I'm scanning. You actually have to keep, you have to keep, you have to keep your eye scanning. But it's a very nice tension, I must add. It's not a scary tension, it's a very nice tension. It's, a, it's an Af something that's probably unique, to, unique Africa. to Africa, but I'm sure other places, continents, with wild animals, it's the same basic thing. So now we've probably got about, uh, I don't know, I guess about 15 minutes to the gate of the National Park and then we'll be spending the night inside the great Central Color Hurry Game Reserve. See that. By and large, Big Game is concentrated inside the game reserves. Although, as we've already proven, that's not always the case. But entrance to the reserves is tightly controlled. Dumelama. Dumelama, how are you? I'm excited to be here. Okay. Can you please register your vehicles? On the road now from uh, Kare for about an hour on this track. Average speed is about 30, 35 kilometers an hour. We have 70 kilometers to a place called Piper's Pan. Piper's Pan is special to me because in 2010 I stopped there and, and camped there and it's just beautiful. It's a, it's a kind of Kalahari Vista that I absolutely adore. At the moment the bush is quite still quite thick and it's starting to thin out um, like this and uh, become more and more picturesque. So the 
wildlife is uh, starting to appear. Uh, some red, I think they're red hartebeest. Of course, a beautiful hems bock, which is uh, also known as an oryx. And some ground squirrels. And the ground squirrels. The African ground squirrel, unique to Africa, diurnal, live in colonies with sometimes up to 20 individuals. They are very similar in their behaviour to the American prairie dog, with one to three babies per litter, but breeding in Africa all year round. I have a very, very fond memory of this place. In 2010, I uh, drove from the farthest southern point of the Central Kalahari Game Reserve um, in order to find out what it would be like to do a solo trip. It was my first solo tripping, absolutely alone. But actually it was my second because the first one failed because of tyre failures. The second one I managed to reach this point and I camped on this pan over here. This is called Piper's Pan. And what I did is I actually drove down there to that clump of trees down there and I set up camp. I had one of the most memorable campsites of my entire overlanding career. It was absolutely magnificent. My chosen camping spot at Piper's Pan is idyllic. This is what has brought me to this part of the Kalahari. Right now the closest human is probably no nearer than 100 kilometers from me. One of the beauties of Botswana and many of its national parks is that it's quite it's permitted for me to get out of the car and actually stand with the animals not very far away from me and photograph them. Uh, most of the national parks in Namibia and South Africa it's absolutely forbidden. You may not get out of your car at all unless there are designated spots where you where it's permitted or you're in a campsite where you're fenced in and protected. It's the beauty of Botswana and it what it is what makes Botswana, as far as I'm concerned, unique because I don't know of any other country that allows this kind of... I mean, there they are, right there. There could be... If there were a lion around, of course, I would be very careful. And I'm not going to move far away from the vehicle because that would be stupid because there may very well be predators around. But this experience, you can't get it in a lodge. You know, I, I look around me, the animals are moving around me and they're quite comfortable with me. It's to me, this is, this eclipses anything else you can experience in Africa, is to be able to stand face to face with wild animals. A lot of game, eh? Absolutely idyllic. Wow, so Absolutely much more idyllic. than my other two visits. So much more than both. Fantastic. For me. Yes. With the vultures. Got a oh. glimpse of it. I just got a glimpse of it on the camera. Leopard face vultures. They are enormous birds. There were three of them on the ground. Four. And Four. Oh, okay. Difficult to photograph from a car. A black-backed jackal remains close to the kill. Very difficult for us to tell what animal the kill was. And then, of course, they're the hornbills that are just... The hornbills are my favourite bird. Birds. We, I yeah. will get a lovely shot of a hornbill. Probably around the camp when they start yeah. becoming more familiar with us. And as once we're still, they'll come towards us. The Cory Bustard is the largest flying bird native to Africa and may be the world's heaviest living animal capable of flight. This is Deception, Deception Valley, our campsite, designated campsite that we've been given, allocated, is in Deception. It's a classic tree islands. Yeah. Now finding our campsite, it's uh, Deception Camp 01, and I found, see this broken sign here, so we have to do a little bit of upside down but I think this is it because if I take that and that says zero one and if I go there it says there you go aren't I clever okay smarty pants how do you know it's not up that way because there's a campsite right there 
and it's got nobody in it. That's our camp. Prize for the day goes to me. Lovely. Quiet. Pity it's not on one of those beautiful open plains. That would be perfect, but it's still beautiful camp. And we think actually we're going to spend two nights here just chill. We're writing our book together, um, a follow up of our memoir. Uh, we spent a year in Botswana and uh, we have best selling memoir and it needs a update, it needs a follow up. That's one of the reasons why we're here. And so, where should we put the tent is the only question we now have to ask. I think it should go right here. Well, I, I don't need ablution blocks of campsites, I prefer just a wild camp. However, these are they're very rudimentary and they're actually quite nice because they're basic. You have to bring your own water and then you pour it into this thing up there so you can heat it up over the fire and you pour it in here and if you come in here with me you'll see uh, so that's it there. So you just let it down, you let that down and you've got a little tap here and you put water in there and you've got yourself a little shower. Okay it's very straightforward um, and then the, the, the toilet is probably my guess just a long drop. It most, most certainly is just a long drop. But a word of warning though, walk in slowly because you don't know what wild animals, yeah it's just this plain long drop, this one has no literature, normally there's a rules of the game park stuck here, <clears throat> but in this time there's none. Long drop toilet and and that's that's the facilities you have in these campsites and I actually like it that way because it means that it keeps away the riffraff. Hey, Yo. in that case, what are you doing here? I, uh, I'm not here, I'm just a figment of your imagination. So are you going to make me a roaring campfire? Uh, we're definitely going to have a campfire tonight. Um, I was thinking about doing some astrophotography, but not really any foregrounds. Foregrounds for astrophotography you need a distinct shaped tree or something distinctive. This is this bush. So um, I might see how it goes. But I'm actually quite bushed, um, and I think I, I Just need Just as well you're in the bushes then? Yeah, I need to get the tent up and a cold thing in my hand. Gwyn and I prefer ground tents to roof tents, so we'll first put that up, then make dinner. Through the fields of our paths Feelings our ways Keeping us close but So tonight we have a beef stroganoff. It's not really a stroganoff, it's with garlic and olive oil and stuff. A stuff? Stuff. Potatoes and, oh, oh yes, it's cordon bleu. Um, it's been slaving all day. <laughs> and, that's, and that's all you can manage. <laughs> I'm going to say on the subject. So David Livingston, are we actually having a fire tonight or not? I was thinking about it, but I'm also busy. <clears throat> Today we're chilling out. We're literally just going to sit here and just enjoy the surroundings, the silence, the birds, and, well, relax. Unlikely that animals will come past here. Uh, we might get a few, but it's well away from the plains. Most of the, the animals here at this time of year are plains animals. They like the wide open spaces. They feel very insecure in very heavy thick bush because they cannot see predators. So they tend to congregate on the plains. And in this park, there are very few campsites actually on the plains themselves. They're basically all tucked away into the bush. One of the advantages of not moving camp are the birds. The residents quickly become accustomed to one's presence and get in close. This beautiful creature is the crimson-breasted boo-boo. And this, for me, is the very symbol of the Kalahari itself, the yellow-billed hornbill. But if you want to see big game, then you have to go looking for it. 
we are on a little game drive. We're a few is a bit limited, uh, so we haven't been able to do a lot of game driving, but we, so we wait until four o'clock and we're heading to the Sunday Pan waterhole. Hopefully we'll see something. And I find myself on these trips, you know, there are a few other people in the park now, the northern section of the, the central Kalahari, uh, a lot of uh, camping sites, and this is where most people come to see animals. And I find myself automatically, if I see cars over there, I'll go over there. Being alone being, is actually more important to me than seeing animals. And that, but that's just me. The best thing to do in an environment like this to see animals is to follow the game viewing vehicles that belong to the lodges in the area because the guides know more, the locals know more than the visitors. So sometimes if you just follow them at a distance, you might actually get lucky when it comes to seeing game. Right now, don't know what we're gonna head, don't know what we're gonna see ahead of us. This is Sunday Waterhole. We are surprised to see that there are there are no animals around, which means there must be uh, standing water in other places that we don't know about. Uh, but normally, time like this, uh, this time of year, um, animals will come here. However, the bush is in such good condition that it suggests to me that there's been a lot of rain. It's actually looking, looking fantastic, fantastic. Remember, if you're in a place like this, keep your wits about you. You just got to be aware of things around. Um, it's a wildlife area. There could be any kind of animal around. This is amazing. There's a springbok that has just come down to the waterhole while I'm sitting here. It's not too worried about me. And it's coming down for a drink. It's very curious. It's not uh, nervous of me. I'm actually amazed that it's so bold. Not perturbed at all about me. And if I stand up now, it will probably run. I'm going to stand up very slowly, see what she does. It's also time for me to get back closer to the vehicle. The bush is quite thick here and predators could appear at any time. I'm going to walk away and see what she does. Today has been an amazing day, just such an amazing day in the bush because we've actually done very, very little and we, we just chilled out, we, we, we woke up in the morning, we had a coffee and breakfast and I looked at some of the footage and we, we just sat and photographed the birds, the yellowbill hornbills and the crimson breasted shrike just the bird life and interestingly though if you if you're interested in birds the best way one of the best ways to see birds is to actually just sit at the campsite because all the birds around kind of flee a bit when you arrive and then very very soon get used to your presence and then come back and we had all kinds of birds around it was absolutely wonderful then in the afternoon our game drive and that beautiful moment with the with this with that springbok that springbok ram that was came to to drink and it was it wasn't startled by my presence at all I just moved very slowly never moved towards it was move you know turn my back to it which gives it an indication if you turn your back to an animal that actually relaxes them because I, I I just it was a wonderful moment it was really a truly wonderful moment for me to actually be that close to to, to an animal and it wasn't scared of me was absolutely wonderful. Gwyn was in the truck, she was keeping a lookout for, for any other animals with, uh, with binoculars and ready to drive towards me should we, had we had seen any predators. It's been an amazing, amazing day. Well I feel the feel as, as bombed as I look, although <laughs> 
extremely refreshed after a fantastic day, a relaxing day. Today we're moving off again. It rained heavily last night, but not heavily enough to make the perhaps to make the track a little bit slippery, but certainly not enough to make it soft. Uh, we're heading out today to a place called Makari Kari Pans National Park. Um, an area of which that I don't know at all. The Makari Kari Pans themselves I know extremely well, but this little corner I've never, to, never been to before. Is that what we're going to go and do today? The Makari Kari Pans National Park is characterized by vast areas, enormous flat plains, um, migrating animals, uh, but here of course you can see lots and lots of cows and we've got to go through a few villages to get there but this this is a, basically the lowest portion of Botswana in terms of altitude this area was once a vast lake and this it's not a plateau it's actually a, a sunken area very 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 flat for hundreds of kilometers across is the original lake bed of that ancient lake that once covered almost all of Botswana and it gets very dusty uh, but it's beautiful countryside and I love it so much because of it's, it's true big sky country. Ah, nice to see elephant crossing the road. Not that many countries left where you can just drive on the public roads and have to slow down every now and again for elephant. Makes it special. Turned a bit chilly actually, the wind's come up. Turned very, very, very chilly. Can I tell you the names? Please. Okay. Jack. Jack. Uh. This is Job. Job. Hey. And Jack. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Now we're at a town called Rockops. Rockops is typical oh, man, little town in Botswana, little fuel station so filled up. And um, we're thinking about what to do tonight because the wind is really blowing, the dust is horrible. So we're thinking about maybe finding some shelter from that because the Makarikari Pan game reserve in that area is just wide open and there's a dust storm. So do we want to go camping in a dust storm? Not sure if we want to do that. So we're going to look at the map now, decide what we do tonight, but we might change our plans a little bit with an iron brew when you ask my kids you know what do you miss about south africa iron brew is often mentioned actually i thought it was a bit of a letdown i expected it to be like dr pepper no but iron brew is not dr pepper i know it's not dr pepper what are we going to do tonight let's have a look I at the map think, yeah. we're here what was our plan and now what are right. we thinking we are at the town of Rakops and our plan was to drive up here uh, to Kukama and then drive into and camp in this area here what we're going to do now is we're going to drive up and have a look and decide if we camp the alternative is to uh, drive through it and actually camp at a place called Gweta because just south of Gweta is a Gweta Lodge uh, where we can camp and it's sheltered, I know it, I've been there a couple of times that is their Gweta Lodge. So that's our alternative depending on the strength of wind but I think what we should do now is just go up there and go in and have a look. Done. Our route means that we have to cross the Boteti River but there is no bridge but there is a pond. The water level being quite low means that the pont doesn't need to move. The pont fee has in effect become a toll fee to cross this temporary bridge. Those of you who have seen my series called Living the Overlander's Dream 
my search for the source of the Okavango River, will remember right at the end, after weeks and weeks and weeks of following the river right from the highlands of Angola, right the way through the Okavango, finally the Boteti River, and a dry Boteti River bed. This is the water pouring occasion. <laughs> Where I witnessed the water it was, this was in 2010. They had not seen water in the river since 1974. This is absolutely amazing. This, this is the man I told you. That water has come from the very start of the Okavango. Yeah. The very top of the mountain. Is it? Right at the top. And now what are you going to do? <laughs> 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 what am I going to do? This is that same river and that moment, that moment where I poured the water from the source back into the river. Good, lovely. <laughs> well done. Oh, you've got to join the two, you've got to join the two, you've got to make it join. Is it going to work? Will yes, I have yes, enough? Yes, yes, Will yes, I have yes. enough? Come on, come yeah. on, come on, come on. <laughs> yes! <laughs> it was less than 10 kilometers from this very spot. And since then, in 2010, this river has not dried. It stayed wet. And in fact, now it's, if you look on Google Earth, this whole area has become a new floodplain. Absolutely amazing to see it now, eight years later. In the next episode, I feel a tree. It's quite smooth. Some zebra get a fright and some impala get a fright. And we are reunited with some old friends. I would have recognized you anywhere. <laughs> <laughs>